Again, I want to thank uh, all those speakers have that we still have people here um, that, till the very end. Uh, don't speak further. I have no disclosures that actually pertain to this particular talk itself. A couple objectives. Number one, I want to give you the why. One of those why it's important. Talk about the how, in other words, the how we do it. And then finally, the what. That is what we need with an assessment aspect to make sure it's actually valuable. So number one is like, you know, we talk about evaluations and assessment, and this is actually, Christine McGuire says that evaluation is probably the most logical field in the world if you use a little bit of logic. It just fits together and jumps at you. It's very common sense. A while back, Voltaire said, however, common sense is very rare. And I think you'll see that that's <coughs> certainly the case. So the why. Does anybody know the story? All right. Ryan Leaf, second round draft pick. Second. First round, second pick. Excuse me, you're right. Uh, $11.2 million. Played 25 games. Threw 3,600 yards. The gentleman to his left, as you're looking at it, Peyton Manning, I'm sure most of you know, was actually the first pick right before. And in fact, the Colts really wanted Ryan Leaf instead of him, but they chose otherwise. Got a little bit more money, a few more games, as you see, five MVPs, a couple Super Bowls, a few more yards, and a better rating. Well, what happened to him in a sense? Ryan Leaf was in jail. Peyton Manning won Super Bowls. I'll bring this up really for this reason. In other words, assessment is important no matter what we do. In our situation, assessment is important not only of your uh, program itself, but of the individuals, probably even more so than here. Yeah, okay, fine. You know, a couple billionaires lost a little bit of money on somebody, but if we don't assess individuals correctly and they go out and do what they're doing, they're going to injure individuals. So that's why it's critically important that we have a way of assessing people and helping move forward, whether that be formative or summative. Now the how. Certainly they're objective measures, right? And understand, in my opinion, objective measures are something that are, it's hard, concrete, no question about it, right? It's a score. We know the ball went over the line, especially with uh, replays now, but you have a time or you have a distance. You know, it's really a very numerical aspect to that. Those are objective measures. How we do it a lot of times, unfortunately, is quite subjective, right? Kind of we're sitting in the... Uh, Coliseum in Rome and deciding did they win or lose, right? And what happens after that? We oftentimes deal with uh, expert opinion. And this is actually the movie that the old classic one is the I know it when I see it concept that uh, Justice Potter Stewart said it was actually based on this movie. And that's kind of what we have. Doesn't mean that's initially wrong. I mean, a lot of times we do know when we see it. And that certainly is something we need to look at. But again, understand that's very, very subjective. I want to bring up this other, a lot of people talk about these being objective as well. I want to talk about a couple of things, checklists as well as global readings. But I would submit to you that these are really objectively subjective. Yeah, we're putting, we're putting numbers to things, which is nice. It makes, it makes us feel good, right? That we can actually compare a number, compare people. It does make some sense. But when you think about it, it still is an object, it still is a subjective aspect. Did they do it or not? Even when you deal with checklists, perhaps a little bit less so, but the whole idea is, you know, is it correct, incorrect, or not done? You know, if you think about it, just the first one alone, low needle, two-thirds distance down the needle shaft. Okay, well, you're looking at a video or watching somebody, is that really two-thirds? Is it not exactly two-thirds? Is your two-thirds the same as mine? All of those things that you have to deal with over time. So it is actually still objective. Now, the good news about checklists, of course, is it is typically task-specific. There's some advantages, particularly the fact that they can, you can observe them instead of just gauging whether you think they did it or not relatively uniform, and it gives you the individual some formative aspects. It's kind of funny when we actually did simulation training for uh, Central Lines and actually the uh, internal medicine residents came through it, they used the checklist a little bit differently and in the sense that just off camera, we could actually hear them, they didn't realize at the time, their partner was actually reading the checklist as they went through it. Now that's good if it's formative, not necessarily good if we're actually trying to assess them completely. Downside is, if you think also, it's a very novice-based, rule-based concept as far as when you go through that. And there's really no decision process that's involved. Now, global assessment, same concept. Again, we're putting numbers to things, but there again, it's still your decision as to whether it was or wasn't done, how well it was done, even if you anchor things, right? You're and I, you know, trying to get the Raiders to be trained and the like certainly improves your uh, 
reliability, but at the same time, you're still dealing with a, uh, a, a subjective aspect to that. So the what? If you're gonna use it, you need valid results, right? And I will say this, it was kinda nice this entire uh, conference so far, I never heard anybody use the term dealing with a, uh, a valid tool or valid simulator or valid assessment. And what I mean by that is this, is like the current standards of validity are totally different than what they were in the distant past. And what it is, validity is actually the appropriateness of the inferences of the scores, right? And validation is this whole process. It's a hypothesis-driven process. And that process is based on identifying evidence. That evidence is based on test content, it's based on response process, internal structure, relation to other variables, consequence of testing. If you wanna use this as a um, high stakes exam, you certainly need stronger evidence. You need evidence in all these areas. If it's a low stakes exam or a low stakes uh, aspect, you don't really need much evidence at all. You know, I would submit to you that uh, we, we knew individuals when they were, had practiced uh, just plain suturing, whether that was on the, uh, their scrub belt, whether that was on the bed post in the uh, call room, right? They practiced, they, nobody ever validated anything whether that worked or not, but we knew it did. You could tell when they practiced. Again, we weren't necessarily trying to test people on that, so it's very different. And what I mean by this, the interesting though, is we talked about the current standards, Current standards have been present since for the last 32 years in, in, in the educational literature. We just haven't been using them. That's when that was a cell phone, that was a Toyota Camry, and that was a television. And oh, by the way, one of the number one songs at the time was actually We Are the World in 1955. <laughs> and it's still going strong, so, but things do change, right? Um, so that's what we need to try and focus on. And let me give you one example, because this is kind of a challenging concept, but actually one of the better examples, first of all, is to explain what it's not. It's not a valid tool, there aren't valid tests, there aren't valid curricula, there aren't validity types. All right, on the face of things, this is a BMW. Doesn't really look like it. That doesn't exist either. Just as an aside, face validity hasn't existed since the 1950s but yet we still see it in the surgical literature today. Again, high stakes, give an example. I think FLS, which you've heard about, as we know is mandated, the validity evidence is based on the use of its results. In other words, it's high stakes. Being high stakes, it needs a lot of this evidence. And let's see what that evidence is, and I'm kind of break it down. When you talk about based on the test content, the answer is yes. Does, does it, the test represent, excuse me, does the test represent the domain itself? And I would submit to you it does. There's a written test blueprint based on what everybody in individual feels that this is actually important to know. And even when you talk about the uh, skills portion, the instruments are used are the same ones used in MIS. As far as re response process, does that cause the test taker to exhibit the trait? And I would suggest to you again, it does. You're talking about two-handed movement, cutting, suturing, things you use regularly in laparoscopy. Internal structure, again, evidence there is present. Certainly show that inter reliability is very, very strong on the skills section, as well as test retest reliability also. Relationship to other variables, and this is what most people think about when you think about trying to uh, get validity evidence. In other words, does it relate to some other assessment of interest, something that's actually been shown to work? And in this case is also true, where it correlated with in-training technical skills assessments. It uh, correlated with the uh, goals scores and actually in a multivariate analysis, they were independent predictor of operative performance using goals as well. And then finally, consequence of testing, a bit of a challenge here, but in short, does the test have the granularity to distinguish between the groups that it has of interest, especially if you're dealing with the consequences of having people fail and having challenges there. And again, over 90% of the chief residents do pass, so they do move on, and so it's set appropriately. So in conclusion, hopefully I've explained that I believe why assessment or that Yardstick is important, the how we do it, and in fact, sometimes not so well still, but it's improving. And then what we really need as far as to adhere to some sound psychometric uh, principles if we're gonna continue to move the assessment needle forward. Thank you. Thank you.